A very good afternoon. My name is Isaac Phillips and Keen Tola. You're welcome to the Porter's Gate live broadcast. This afternoon, once again, I uh, will be introducing, while well, not introducing, we will be continuing actually on um, the series of uh, the teaching we began on Shaw Foundation. It has been a beautiful, wonderful uh, program that has been and it's giving us some clarity into how to return back to our foundation and fix, you know, things that are not in alignment with the will of God. And uh, I will be continuing again this afternoon as we continue to look into this whole series on foundation. And um, and uh, I believe that uh, some of the uh, things that we're going to be looking into this afternoon will give us uh, more perspective and clarity into um, God's mind for this afternoon let us pray heavenly father we want to thank you we give you glory and praise for your presence this afternoon thank you for your name thank you for your nature your life thank you for the impressions of your spirit thank you for the imprint of your character and nature yes that is becoming even a reality in our life i thank you lord for this i thank you lord that regardless of what we may be facing or going through in this new day, you have made a declaration that your house must be built. And we are in that process right now that we are reconsidering, yes, even the materials that has been used, oh God, in what we have termed and defined as church, but indeed is not reflecting your very nature and life. So Father, as we go back into your word and begin to find the accurate blueprint and begin to find pattern and begin to find, yes, models and begin to find the very order that you have instructed your men to build with. Father, that we will indeed, yes, receive these tools and come into, yes, the very aspect of our life that requires correction and will begin to correct. We thank you. We honor your holy name that you will continue to grant us even that capacity not to compromise, not to look back, not to be distracted by what the enemy, yes, may be doing. We know that in the days of the rebuilding of the, of the walls and the gates, Yes, that the Sambalat and the Tobias, they, they arose and they challenged Nehemiah and they did all they could to stop and hinder him from continuing in the project. But we thank him, this Father, that we will continue to advance even as Nehemiah did advance in his day. We will continue to press in. We will continue, yes, to see that your work, oh God, carries on until we get to that place of perfection in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, well, once again, I want to welcome you. Like I said, uh, um, it's been a wonderful time that uh, um, heaven has been really granting us this uh, uh, grace and uh, um, insight to continue to press into the Lord's mind and the Lord's desire, you know, for uh, that which uh, we are looking into. And I, I, I pray and I hope that you will indeed join in that which the Spirit of the Lord is emphasizing with regards to, you know, the current mind of God. We, we need to look into our foundation. We need to rebuild our foundation. We need to correct our foundation. All right. Uh, I'm just going to, if you're listening to me on Facebook, please, I would like you to share, uh, uh, you know, the, the link and let everybody know that, yes, we are live. Let uh, your friends know that we are live. If you're connecting with us, we we'll really appreciate that. Please share the link. And uh, yes, let's let's carry on with that which the Spirit of the Lord is, is declaring. Just give me a minute. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm just trying to get some connection done here. All right. Uh, this afternoon... There are a couple of uh, scriptures that I really want us to look into. The last time we, we stopped, you know, we looked at um, Matthew chapter 16. We looked at Matthew chapter 16. Yeah, we, we were looking at the whole concept of foundation in relating to, to identity. I remember uh, in our early uh, um, session, I was speaking about foundation, you know, in terms of, you know, d defining our, uh, you know, our identity. And I think that is something that, you know, I, I really need to reemphasize because if we really understand that foundation is our identity and what we do or how we relate, all right, to, you know, to the issue of our life, 
you know, as 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 a concept to how you know the the Father will want us to view ourselves, view our life. Then 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 it gives us you know that uh, um, impetus, as it were, all right, to begin to look into the very construction of our existence in terms of identity. Now, I've said this before: the foundation is not just about. Um, the beginning or the the starting point of of a thing you understand foundation is actually what defines the value system of what we do of who we are what we build right so so you you will notice that jesus as he engages with society as he engages with his disciple he, he always draw their heart and their mind back to the whole issue of identity and that's what we you know we we we, we saw in um, in Matthew chapter 16 verse um the bible says in verse 13 that when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciple in fact this scripture you know somehow uh, you know predefined uh, amen, the, the whole you know a uh, uh, concept of how the church began remember the church did not begin until act chapter you know chapter 2 Yes, the church began in Acts chapter 2. The whole process of the New Testament church, in, in fact, began in Acts chapter 2. But we, we saw that Jesus already laid the foundation of how that church was going to exist. Amen. So, in, 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 this, in this scripture, in, 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 the, in the region of Caesarea Philippi, he touched on something that I think we also need to look into and uh, you know call to mind as we begin to look into the whole issue of foundation and correcting our foundation the bible says when he got to the region of caesarea philippi he asked his disciple he didn't he wasn't even asking the people he, he was asking his own disciple he said who do people say who do people say the son of man is verse 14 they said some say john the baptist some elijah others jeremiah or one of the prophets now, so this was the populist opinion. This was the general opinion of the people, how they perceive, how they identify Christ. Because uh, how you perceive and identify yourself or, you know, other people, in fact, speaks directly into your foundation. It speaks into the very construction of your perception, your belief system, your value system, how you view people, how you view, you know, the, the things of the spirit. You know, that, that, that sight, that ability to see, you know, the father was asking, you know, Jeremiah, what do you see? He, he was reaching into his foundation. He was reaching into something very, very, very profound, very, very deep into, you know, into his very life. Who do my men say that I am? All right. What do you see? And this was the same question Jesus was trying to his disciple. How do they view me in this place? Because how you view, all right, would, would speak with regards to how you understand your own life, how you understand your environment, how you understand, you know, people around you. So, so relating foundation, you know, to image is something that I think we need to look at. Because when you look at basically what is happening today in the body of Christ and you ask yourself, why are people behaving the way they behave? Why is it that, you know, people are building something they know that is contrary to the will of God? Well, maybe they don't know. But if you look into the whole system, into the whole value order of what people today define to be church, you will immediately begin to, you know, at least if you're a person of the scripture, even if you don't have the full rea the full reality of the spirit of god in you but if you have an understanding of scripture you can immediately see that something is wrong but why is it that people are you know are, are still going after these things people still honor and still you know you know verify these things they still praise this you know people you know that you know what they're doing what they're saying is, is contrary to the will of god contrary to the word of god but people are still you know hailing them people still celebrate this thing so you you, you can see that that really speak into the people not that not the leader not the church but the people themselves something something is wrong with their you know with their belief system with their value system them with the way they see things with the way they view things with the way they understand things and i think that is very very you know a, a crucial if we really want to begin to talk about the restoration of the house of god vis-a-vis -vis rebuilding its foundation because the foundation of the of the house of god amen is established on people's you know belief system remember foundation we don't see it foundation speaks into your belief it speaks into your identity it speaks into your you know your courage your your perception it speaks into your value system it speaks into your ideology 
all right it speaks into you know issues of security all right so if you if you find somebody insecure not really living to you know to the value standard of the principles of god or somebody who is always you know you know tilting towards you know how people think or what people think about him or her you know how they view him or her and then that something tells you that uh, this foundation is 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 built on you know on a on a shallow on a shallow ground is built on sand so so i think this is something that uh, we we need to consider and we need to look into the whole issue of foundation in relating to our identity so jesus spent you know said to his disciples so you know, people say I'm John's. People say I'm, you know, uh, I'm Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Then he looked at his own disciple. Then he asked, "Who do you, th- who do you say that I am?" Okay, fine. Now we understand what how people view me. But you, in person, how do you view me? How do you? Because how you view him speaks a lot in terms of how you, you, you know, you you view the whole order of the kingdom. All right? Our perception, our understanding of the kingdom of God, amen, is directly connected to how we view, how we understand Christ. If we, if if the if the if the if the revelation or the understanding of the Christ we have is still based on you know uh, uh, the fact that Christmas that was born you know on Christmas Day uh, you know that little child of Bethlehem or you know uh, um the, 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 you know the Christmas the, you know the, the excuse me the Christ of uh, um God knows who you know whatever view that we have of Christ if it's not in alignment to the accurate definitions that we read in the Word of God it means that our understanding our view, our you know, our, our identity of Christ, Amen, is is inaccurate. Now, when you look at Isaiah chapter fifty-three, Isaiah fifty-three gives us a good picture of of who Jesus is. Era. But before we understand that, the, the 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 scripture also, you know, you know, gave us an in an insight into how Jesus was more beyond recognition. You know, when he was beaten and, you know, he was bruised, you know, the chastisement of our peace, the scriptures said was laid on him. All that process brought him to a point where, you know, he was beaten beyond human recognition. And and I think that's what some of us have done, you, you, you know, you know, to the very identity, to the very life, to the very value of Christ that we've so beaten him today in the church to the point that, you know, he's hardly recognized. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, I always say that we've built an image of another Christ in the mind of people that today it's so difficult for people to actually recognize who is the real Christ, who is the true Christ. No wonder Jesus said, you know, that in the last day there will be, you know, a, you know, a rise of all kinds of people, all kinds of Christ, all kinds of Jesus coming and claiming that they are the, you know, they are the Savior, they are the Redeemer. And people will follow them. Why? Because the true image of Christ, all right, has been systematically murdered, has been systematically damaged. But our duty, you know, as as true, you know, uh, uh, vessels, true servants of God is to come back and begin to reconstruct within the mind of society, within the mind of the church, amen, the image of Christ, the true image of Christ. It's for us, amen, to maintain, all right, and to preserve the true image, the true identity of Christ so that our foundation can be solid. And this is one thing that, you know, uh, uh, Paul really dealt with in his epistle, especially in the in the epistle of um, you know to the efficient church he made it clear most of the things that he was talking about has to do with you know the 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 the, the redeemed identity all right of the believer and and i I will appreciate if you can go back right as you know as as a believer if you can go back into the word take time to read the epistle the pauline epistle they are very powerful because they give you amen they give you 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 and me that solidity that insight that understanding into who we are all right our 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 identity all right is connected to the pauline epistle god is like the father actually gave paul that revelation of understanding of defining all right even though he wasn't there where the church was born he wasn't there in the book of acts you know at the beginning all right but you know when this guy came to you know you know uh, finally came to the lord gave his heart to the lord it is it, like the grace that was given to him like he said in, in first corinthians chapter 3 all right from verse 10 he said you know by the grace of god he was given that ability to you know to lay the foundation as a wise master builder he had that apostolic grace amen like i said some time ago i think in uh, i'm not sure if it's the the third or second series of this teaching, I, I, you know, I talked about not everybody had the, has that capacity or that grace, as it were, to build foundation. 
all right it has to be given to amen somebody who is an expert just like we have experts you know in 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 constructing natural houses we also have experts amen that are given that insight that understanding that spiritual you know uh, uh, understanding and depth all right into how to construct foundation we're talking about you know that order of life like we see in the life of paul he said i've been given that grace amen to lay the foundation he says, when I lay, other people will come to build on it. But they, but they, they, but they must be careful how they build. They, the, the, the most important thing is that Paul knew how to build foundation. And he didn't just build foundation in terms of doctrine. His entire life, amen, be, in fact, became a reflection of the very foundation of what, you know, we're talking about. Because, you know, foundation is not just, you know, about, you know, what you're, you're able to teach or what you're able to say. Foundation speak deep into your, your, your own value system, your preference. So there's something I'd like to quickly, you know, highlight here in Ephesians chapter 2. Talking about foundation in relating to identity. Alright? Foundation in relating to identity. In fact, I'm, I'm going to read from verse 14. I think that will give us a, a kind of uh, insight. For he himself is our peace. Talking about Jesus. I'm reading Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. For himself is our peace who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with his commandments and, and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one, one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And it and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came preach peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles. I want you to note the word plural there, the, the, not the, 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 you know, the plurality of the, of the word apostles here. Built on the foundation of, of the apostles and prophets, which Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. You see something very unique here. That is a bit different from what we read in uh, um, in First Corinthians chapter three. You know, in verse ten, he says the church is built upon the foundation of the apostle and the apostle, the apostle, upon the apostle, right, and the prophet, and Jesus being the chief cornerstone. You know, there he was using a you know a, a singular word, the apostle and the prophet and the prophet. Meaning that is you know the, the 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 idea that we see in in First Corinthians chapter. You know, you know, chapter chapter three speaks into certain, you know, you know, certain core doctrine, the core doctrine of the apostle and prophet. So, so there are dimension of a life of value system that you find, all right, within the apostolic life, within the apostolic uh, uh, um, ministry, within the apostolic word, within the apostolic grace. All right, that is edged into all right because that foundation that, that he was talking about in um you know in first corinthians chapter th- chapter three right is a foundation of values and principle all right it was a is a foundation of values and principle a foundation of jesus christ being the way the, the truth and the life that is an order that's a that's a core structure you know of of you know of that which defines the church the ecclesia that jesus is the way jesus is the truth jesus is the life within that framework okay we we then find all right that the, the values remember the bible says it was when jesus was you know uh, 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 as Bob says it was when Jesus was ascended that he gave gifts to men. Now the gift that he gave to men, all right, are the 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 the, the construct of what you would define or the grace. Let me put that word, the, the, use that word, the grace of the apostle and the prophet. Alright? 
But in, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, when he talks about apostles and prophets, now he's talking about the various dimension of, of, of grace and life and, you know, and, uh, you know, and teachings. All right. We don't have, like I always say, we don't have one, uh, you know, we, we, we don't have two apostles that are like, okay. Every apostle or prophet, amen, has, you know, a unique div- divine grace. That has been, you know, that has been given, all right, to express a dimension of Christ and his life or his truth to the body of Christ. So that is what he's talking about here. That, you know, the church is, is built, all right, on the apostles and the prophets. Talking about the, what, whatever, you know, uh, 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 you know, reflection of, of grace, you know, that is given to them in their teaching. That, that concept of building all right, the church on certain doctrinal value, you know, patterns reflecting within the character of certain individuals who are apostles or prophets. Amen. So that's why he's saying here that, you know, you know uh, 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 verse 20, but verse 20 says, you built on the foundation of the apostles. Apostles, plural, like I've said, men, women who has certain you know unique grace and giftings all right they inject that into the very foundation of our life they inject that grace that capacity that is different from the core structure of their doctrine of the of the doctrine of the apostle of the apostle of the apostolic let me use that word the doctrine of the apostolic the doctrine of the prophetic or the value system or the or the life as it were of the of the prophet and the uh, and the apostle that you find all right so so he, 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 verse um, v- verse three of of first Corinthians deals with the first layer all right of, of of the foundation meaning that these are all issues of doctrine but here he's talking about the various unique you know expressions the various unique expressions of the life of the grace of the ministry. You know, of these individuals that have been graced to express apostolic life, apostolic, you know, truth, apostolic, you know, capacity, apostolic, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, value system, apostolic culture. All right, that in every sector of life you find men who are gifted, who are graced to go and reflect. All right, the the, the life, the, the 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 principles, the the truth of God. All right, in in those dimension of existence. And all this is done under the auspice of, you know, of, of the apostolic grace and, you know, and the prophetic grace. So, so he says, you build upon the foundation of apostles and prophets with Christ, with Christ, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Verse 21 says, in him, now look at that, in Christ, in him. The whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. That's powerful. In Christ, the whole building are joined together, rising up as one order, as one life. In other words, when when that which has been built into the very foundation of our existence... If we walk in the reality of that which has been built, all right, as you know, as, as a foundation, as a foundational truth of the apostles and prophets, that the Bible says, Amen, comes together, then is been built up into Christ, who is the Lord. You see, there's a shift in now. It's not just about being in, be, being savior again. No, he now becomes our Lord, the Lordship, the Lordship of Christ. In the order of our, our foundational understanding of kingdom truth is what really gives us that capacity, that understanding, that template, as it were, that enable us, all right, to have solidity, to have solidity, to have solidity. We cannot have, you know, sound spiritual foundation, all right, without understanding Ephesians chapter 2, verse, you know, uh, uh, verse, you know, 20 in particular. All right, that we are, we are, you know, we are being built. Thank you, Jesus. That we're being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Himself. Now, I like to quickly just, you know, you know, uh, say this. It's important that when we refer to apostles and prophets, that we don't see 
personality. <laughs> that we don't see personality. Yes, the gifts are carried by people. But if we focus on the people, we will miss the message. We will miss all right, the, the, the grace and the giftings. Now, having said that, I'm not saying, we, you know, the carriers of the gifts must be, you know, must be looked down on or must be disrespected. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, they must be honored. But I'm saying the honor has to be in the context of their calling and their grace and their expressions. It's important that we understand that every apostolic, you know, uh, 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 grace or giftings, you know, are expressed through individuals, through those whom God has called. When he says he gave gift to men, the gift resides in the men that he gave to the church. So we cannot, we cannot, you know, honor the gift and not honor the man. Having said that, but we cannot also, you know, play down on the gift while we focus on the man. Because uh, what makes the man, the man is what he carries, the gift. So he, he, when we say we're built upon the foundation, we're not built upon human being. When Jesus said, I will, you know, I will build my church. When, you know, remember, you know, in, in Matthew chapter 16, we read that Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And later on, you know, Peter said, you Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I say to you, you are Peter. And on this truth, on this rock, on this revelation, I'll build my church. He wasn't building the church on Peter. But he was building the church on that which has been injected or infused into Peter, which is a revelation from the Father. So that, that puts us in that position where we understand the whole process of grace and giftings. All right? The Bible says the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. Now, if we understand this, it really helps us, you know, in dealing with the issue of really, uh, 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 the, you know, dealing with the worship of men and honoring men beyond board. Okay. And over, you know, o o you know, over honoring men to the point where we almost begin to worship men. And, and that's a problem that we, you know, we, we've seen the Catholic church that has now become even a reality, a more reality to the, in the Pentecostal, you know, uh, and charismatic, even the apostolic community. And we need to deal with that if we really want to regain our foundation in terms of knowing and, and, and appreciating the value system of, you know, what the father you know, wants to do in our, in our time, all right? This is a day of the restoration of the church. The father is rebuilding his church and the pattern of, you know, that restoration, that rebuilding, the pattern of relaying the altar, rebuilding the altar and, you know, and relaying the foundation of the temple, all right? Like we see, we're going to look into that, like we see in the days of Ezra, you know, it's very crucial that we don't, all right, uh, 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 miss the direction. We don't, you know, uh, lose the the focus of what you know the father is doing because at the end of the day whatever we build or we restore back amen would define if the glory of of god amen will fall on us or to continue to be ichabod we don't want that we want to we want to come into a day we want to come into a, 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 a you know a, a season in our life where we 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 can say father you're welcome into your house amen you know where we can say all has been done everything has been done come in take your place amen let your glory you know come that is that's what we're doing we're building for the, the coming of his glory we're building for the coming of his presence all right so having said this i'm gonna yes i think i finished with the scripture but uh i think i need to go back there again and look at something else Yeah, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Verse 21 says, in him, in him, and that's the key word I want to bring out, in him. You see now the, the gift, you know, the, the whole gift is not, you know, collapsed into, into an order called him, Christ. So all that we're doing at the end of the day should collapse into a structure that is reflected in Christ. Not sure if you got that. Whatever we're going to be building, all right, it's going to be fitting us into a dimension of existence called Him, the Christ. So we don't build outside Christ. Whatever we are building, whatever we are restoring, whatever kind of foundation we are, we, we, we are restoring back into its right order is to bring us back to that, you know, path, to that, you know, uh, 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 position that, as it were, that we have in Christ Jesus. 
Because the Christ, the church of Jesus is built within Christ. The true church of Christ is built within Christ. Paul said, for in him we live, we move. In him we have our being. We cannot do anything outside of amen, the order, the, outside the value system, outside the nature of Christ. You see, so when people are doing things and you, you, you can see that, yes, this thing, is, this thing is powerful, this thing is big, but hey, but where's Christ there? You can't find Christ there. That immediately tells us something is wrong, capitally wrong. Yes. And in him, the, the scripture says, and in him you two have been built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Look at that order. Now, we, we are being built up into Christ, but we also are being built up in a dimension that God can live in us through his spirit. I mean, that's a powerful paradox there. We're coming into Christ, but Christ is also coming into us. That's the kind of life that God wants us to, you know, to live or God wants us to at least have an understanding of. So how are we going to, you know, work that technology? I think is something that deals with the whole ministry of the apostles and the prof- and the prophet. The apostolic grace and the prophetic, you know, uh, 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 capacity has the ability to, you know, to, to shape that technology in us that we are, we are being built into Christ yet earlier. Our life is becoming all right, that temple where the father can dwell. But that will only happen, like I said, if we have a deep, solid understanding of our foundation. And like I'm saying, the first thing we need to to establish is the identity of our foundation. And that has to be Christ. Christ, amen, is the rock, is the foundation. If you're going to build, amen, we must be building, you must be building on the rock. Anything you build outside the revelation of Christ. Who do men say that I am? That you have that clear identity because it's in the identity of the revelation of Christ that you have, amen, that you find, you locate, you source your own identity. And it's from there that you're able, amen, to define the identity or the value system of what you're called to build in terms of a family, a home, amen, a a business, or even a church, a local assembly. Without having that clear insight of who Christ is, you'll be building something else. You will be building something else. You will be building something else. So I think it's important that we get that clear. And uh, secondly, I would like to also touch on another point here. And that you find in Luke chapter Luke chapter 6. Let's look at Luke, Luke chapter 6 verse 49. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 6 verse 49. We're going to look at something here. Very important. Yeah, 49. Luke chapter 6 verse 49 says, But he who heard and did not do. Maybe we should take it from verse 47. Whoever come to me and hear my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. He dug deep. The process of digging deep, first of all, let's quickly look into that. When we say digging deep, what are we we talking about? Before you lay foundation, you first dig deep. Digging deep really means that you're reaching deep into the very core of your existence. You see, I'm trying to make this, uh, um, you know, teaching as practicable as possible. You know, really looking at the relevancy that we're not just talking about something that is vague. We're not just talking about doctrines here. You know, yes, we're we're dealing with doctrines because at the end of the day, like I always say, that doctrine deals with your lifestyle, your character. The purpose of doctrine, amen, is to realign our character. If the Lord says, do do something, undo, do something, is giving us, amen, a pattern of existence. 
It's not just for knowledge's sake. Amen. The essence of doctrine, the essence of truth, the essence of revelation is to give us an accurate posture. Is to give us a standing before God and before men. So doctrine is not a bad thing and it's not a theological thing. No, no. Even when we talk about, you know, doctrine of eschatology is to give us a posture of preparation, an attitude of, 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 of life. How do we see life? How do we see the future? The coming of Jesus is not about, you know, getting some words that, you know, puts us in the position of fear and anxiety or, you know, being worried. No, is to, is to, is to posture us, is to give us a courage on earth, is to give us an assurance on earth. That we are not afraid of his coming. That we are not afraid, amen, of the end of the age. Or the end of the world, if you will. So it's important, one of these days we'll talk about doctrine. A a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, somehow, you know, has this, you know, wrong concept with regards to doctrine. So, here is something that he's saying here that uh, we need to look into. Whoever come to me. And hears what I'm saying and also does them. So I will show you what he is like. He's like a man. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. How do you dig deep and still lay a foundation on the rock? It means that this person has dealt with certain you know, imbalance issues, certain, you know, value systems, if you will, that are not built on, you know, stability, that are not built on, you know, the principles of truth that you can build on. You know, we, there are certain things in our life that um, have really messed us up. You know, especially when you look at the the issues of our past, where we're coming from. These are things that we 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 are not proud of. They are not they are not things that you know we can build on. Whatever you try to build on those values, those lifestyle, those you know uh, character, you know those experience. You know they are like sinking sand. Those things is either they sink or they or they slip away, they slide away. Because they, 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 they have no firm grip. And, and, and there are things like that in our life. They, they, those things, they, they define the, 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 the bedrock, the, you know, the footing of our existence. You know, fear and doubt, insecurity. You know, forever suspecting people of you know god knows what forever looking at your back we we, we have no confidence we have no assurance we have no stability so the scripture said with regards to this man he first dug deep to to dig deep is to go bring out those mess you don't want to build foundation on those mess (laughs) So you want to clear every aspect of dirt and, you know, unwanting garbage out of your life. And that's why I said some time ago that when we, when we look into foundation, it speaks deep into our salvation, our orientation to salvation, how we get, came to know the Lord, how, how we came to view the Lord, how we, you know, understand the Lord, how we perceive the things of the Spirit. Our foundation deals with that because true foundation will deal with not just your salvation, but how you 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 came to you know to get saved, how you came to know the Lord. It deals with the motive, it deals with your belief system, it deals with your understanding of redemption, of truth, of love. That you don't have, you know, a, 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 you know, a perverted skewed concept of of love and of life regardless of where you came from or where you were born you know the challenges that you've been through in life 
that when we come to the Lord, those things must be addressed. Because if we don't address those things, then the fact is nothing can really be built into our lives. Nothing can be built upon us. Those things will not stay. Those things will not, you know, will not have a place to, you know, to highlight. So we've got to dig deep. And like I said, digging deep speaks into reaching deep into so those areas that we try to hide away from, those things we don't really want to talk about sometimes. So imagine you give your heart to the Lord, even as a pastor, but you know, you know where you're coming from. You've been hurt, you've been bruised, you've been shattered, you've been, you know, you've been ostracized, you you've been spat on, you've been spoken against, you know, you, you've been abused, all kinds of things you've gone through. Yeah, you just say, Father, yes, uh, forgiving these people, uh, Jesus is Lord. There you are. You go into some training, you know. Maybe some leadership training, Bible school, God knows what. You finish, you 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 get your you know a certificate. There you are. You go start ministry. Only to realize that you know three three four years down the line or five years down the line, you begin to find people or meet people who be, who or, you know who begin to project the same abuse or challenge that you've. You, you know, you faced in the past. And as, and as they project those things, you know, suddenly you begin to get defensive. And uh, the old man you thought was dead, start, come on, start rising up. And you use your own very hand to begin to destroy the very thing that you're building. So you see, that's what I mean. Digging deep means that there is nothing in you that is found wanting. That every aspect of your life, every dimension of your existence, all right, is scrutinized and dealt with. That there is no room for the enemy. Amen. That when the prince of this world comes, he doesn't find his stuff in you. Because if the, if the enemy finds his stuff within your foundation, he's going to use that. Even in places that he has not found his his you know his stuff, just to know that you are in a you are in a kind of a position of a need or lack or you know or, or weakness, and he he comes hitting you hard. You know that's what he said to Jesus. He just finished fasting. He said, "If you truly the Son of God, turn this stone to bread." He will use your need, all right, as a weapon to attack you. The enemy is very good in that. He will look at all right, your needs around. He will look at your wants. He will look at the challenges around your life. To try to attack you. And if you have not built character, you have not built true you know, identity. I cannot stop over you know, emphasizing the whole issue of, of identity. I can't stop emphasizing it. If you don't deal with that, the enemy is going to use that to get at you. And you're going to fall for it. So once we understand who we are in Christ, then it becomes easy. It becomes easy for us to stand. It becomes easy for us, all right, to face whatever challenge that is coming because we know that our life is built upon the foundation. Okay. I think I need to look into that scripture again and then... We'll round up for this afternoon. Or verse 48 says, He's like a man building his house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the flood, the flood of life, when the flood arose, the stream beats vehemently against the house and could not sink it, for it was founded it was founded established on the rock now that's the concept of a man who hear what jesus is saying and does them that's something i really want to you know emphasize as i round up this afternoon with this session what you hear and how you hear of the words of christ of the messages of christ of the truth of christ are the very instruments that defines the solidity of your foundation. Look, not what Jesus said. This wise man is one who hears what he's saying and does them. He hears and he does them. 
our challenge is we hear, but we don't do them. So we know so much of what should happen. We know sh- so much of what should be expected of us. We know so much of you know what truth is. We know so much of it, but we don't practice them. And it's in the practice that the very life or the very truth of the word of God, amen, is birthed into action. It's not in the accumulation of the, of the knowledge. No, no. It's in the practice. This man goes to dig deep. It's in that position of digging deep that the foundations, all right, the process are begin to, you know, get laid. Because if you don't, if you, if you don't, if you don't put to action, if you don't put to work, Right? Reading, studying the scripture is the first point. Yes, you need to read and study the scripture, but beyond reading, you need to have knowledge to be able to apply truth. You need to, you need to have knowledge to be able to apply truth. If you don't have, all right, uh, the you know the, the 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 knowledge of what is expected of you, you can't practice it. But to say, okay, because you've acquired the knowledge, then you've practiced it. It's like saying you have faith without without you know without works without deeds he says show me your faith i'll show you my you know my deeds so we need to be able to say okay the 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 deeds of the faith of what we have in terms of knowledge amen is the action that we show in practicing what is expected of us so when we say foundation deals with image you begin to you begin to picture you begin to have that understanding of who Christ is within your life okay we talk about who Christ is Christ is a spirit you can see him with your physical eyes but you then but then you can see his values you can you can you can relate to you know his 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 preference don't lie don't steal don't kill don't covet you understand? Those are those are little principles that establish and re, re, reflect to us, you know, the, the 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 life and the nature of Christ. He is the truth. There's no lie in him. He is light. There's no darkness in him. So you begin to imbibe those values into your own life. You want to walk in truth. You want to walk in life. You want to walk in his precepts. You want to walk in his order. You want to walk in his, in his, in his counsel. You don't want to live a life all right, that negates or that frustrates the values of Christ. That's how you know that you are building solid foundation. I mean, while I was, you know, growing up as, you know, as a young man in my early Late eighties, early nineties. Late is in fact. I'm still in secondary school. I could remember that I, I back then I had this discipler. I mean, what a man! What a man! He was always after me. He was always checking on me. You know, did I study scripture? Am I having any issue? Do I have an understanding of what I've read? He will ask me a question, and beyond, you know, just you know, generally caring for me in terms of food clothing and but he was very very interested in my spiritual work with God now that's something I don't see today today we the, the term disciple when you talk about disciple is like no it's some old age pattern yet this is what the Lord asks us to go do the word of the Lord is the same yesterday to them forever the principle of the Lord has, has not changed the modus of operandi may change, but the very th- message and the very concept of how he wants us to do it does not change. So everybody today want to talk about sonship. So that itself really took, you know, has taken our mind away from the pattern of being trained, of being developed. Because when we say sonship, all you see is one man who you claim is your spiritual father. Meanwhile, you are not being discipled. If you ask me, I will say let's let's throw away that term sonship and get back to discipleship. I think I prefer that word discipleship. Because if we understand true discipleship, there's no way we will not reflect the life of sonship. But we can all claim to you know to be talking about sonship, but we're not doing the work of discipleship. So back then I was really discipled. And a lot of people today they look at my life and you know spiritually and they admire you and they're like, wow. Yes, that's because I had a strong foundation of discipleship. There was somebody there monitoring me, training me, teaching me. I mean, this person was 
more like my mentor, if you will. But there was nothing like showing that, you know, he's bigger than me. Or, no, he was just training, t- teaching me, asking questions, you know, monitoring me, making sure that I am growing. And, I, you know, by that time, I had a desire. I wanted to grow. So, you know, you were motivated to buy materials, to buy books, to buy magazine. I could still remember back then I used to buy, you know, this magazine of, uh, uh, um, I just forgot the name now. It's this group back then in America. The Navigators, that's it. That's the name. They call them the Navigators. The Navigators, they, they're into strong discipleship, you know, training and material. So, I mean, I used to, when everywhere I go, when I see the magazine on the road, I'm going to stop and I'm going to buy it. You know, it, it just gives you that solid spiritual foundation. You read materials that will build you up, that will give you capacity, that will give you that spiritual mobility. That was me back then. So if we really truly want to grow and, you know, have that spiritual understanding of the kind of, uh, uh, you know, church that is accepted before the Lord. First of all, we've got to deal, deal with the issue of, you know, precise, accurate foundation building. And I think this is something the Father really is emphasizing in this season that we live in. This season has really brought a lot of... Uh, 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 of unfortunate manifestation to, you know, to, to you know, to many lives in terms of you know what we're hearing, what we're seeing out there, people going through all kinds of challenges. This is the day. This is the time where we need to go back to our foundation. We need to build solid foundation. We need to build our life on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus being our chief cornerstone. All right, I'm going to be closing this afternoon with this uh, song. I just want you to listen to it, and then we will call it an afternoon. Enjoy it. Holy heart, sacrifice. This is love. This is love. I bow down to I bow down to the Lamb. I bow down to the Worthy One. I bow down to the Lamb. Son of God died for us. This is love. This is love. He walked the hill. He bore the cross. This is love. This is love. I bow down to the Holy One. I bow down to the Lamb. I bow down to the Worthy One. I bow down. I bow down to the Holy One. I bow down to the Lamb. I bow down to the Worthy One. I bow down.
This is love. This is love. A holy heart was sacrificed. This is love. This is hallelujah. This is love. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in this this afternoon again. Uh, By the grace of God, hopefully tomorrow we will continue on our teaching. Please continue to pray for us and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon. God bless you.